Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to the progress report for February 2024. I can't believe we're already mid-month and uh, it's been going pretty well. I did have two pens that just completely surprised me. Um, they stopped writing, you know, very early on actually. And so I cleaned them out and I've got more to say about one of them. And the other one I just haven't retried again. It's been such a busy month. Also, I won a pen in an Instagram contest. So that got added. And a pen came through the door. Um, a pen friend gift, a Twisby Eco um, transparent orange so I think we'll just dive in with the with the grades and then I'm going to go through each one um, but I'll show you the uh, the ink tile and the pen as we start for anybody who might have missed the uh, Chris's inked pens for February then we'll go through and we'll look specifically at our pages you know how the writing went and everything like that so far anyway at the halfway point so the first pen is the El Grande Modified, the, the custom pen, with the medium um, pen realm uh, nib by Kirk Spear. This has been awesome with the Noodler's uh, Black Swan and Australian Roses. And I gave it an A+. Uh, it's just a beautiful combination. It's an excellent, excellent nib. It's comfortable to write with, and it's got shading. It's I couldn't ask for, for anything more, I don't think. Um, and it was so nice to revisit this ink. So, and we'll we'll go deeper when we go onto the individual pages. But I always forget the the report card, so I've decided to start with it. That's you know, there's so many ways that we can <laughs> cope with the whatever the issue is. Okay, so the second one is the Jen Hao X750, uh, the pink one, with a broad goulet nib and Levenger Pinkly, which is my favorite pink, you know. It's going to be hard to replace that one, but when it runs out. And that's an A+. plus. It's a favorite combination. I used it uh, last February and maybe... I don't know how many years going back, but it's super smooth. This is a nice, wide, broad nib, and it's just beautiful. So another A+. Plus. Um, okay, so the next one, I don't have the pen right here with me because it's it's been cleaned. Oh, Coco, no. Coco. Oops. <laughs> Coco wanted to be up here, but at this point, it's just not going to work out. It's too soon, and there's no way to even have him be in the video because... Yeah, anyway, <laughs> it gets underneath the camera. Poor baby. Um, so the Twisby Precision, um, yeah, and we'll look at that specific page. I gave it an incomplete, um, so we won't stop too long on that one right now. But we'll, I'll talk to you more when we get to that page. Um, it had um, uh, Fabricastille Stone Gray, which is my favorite gray ink, and I know about that ink, so I was surprised. But um, I think... I just didn't have the time required to really slow down at the time to uh, work on it. And then next was the Moon Man Mini, which I put, let's see, these are out of order because I actually moved the, the tiles with the proper, yeah, the ones that didn't work out, I'd moved them. So I had Vinta Makopa in here, and I still do, but it's the third try with this. I wouldn't stop trying with this one because I've never had a problem before with it. But I do have a theory as to why it kept failing, and I'll talk about that when I show you the page, the writing page. I gave it an incomplete, even though I did get one restart that worked really well, and I'll show you that too. Um... It's been kind of frustrating, but I think I've solved the mystery. So we'll get to that in a little bit here. Um, okay, then, uh, so two incompletes, which shocked me because I, I had gone for no fail stuff, you know, <laughs> for the month of February. So, uh, you know, that just shows you that in this hobby, you, you don't uh, always uh, know how it's going to turn out. There could be something going on that we're not sure about. So uh, next up was the Pilot Metropolitan and the Retro Pop Purple with a CM nib that one of their their favorite one of my favorite pilot nibs I think it is my favorite pilot nib and uh, this is just excellent I love the combination the nib is perfect um, yeah the ink color is an old favorite and I did use one of their converters so I'm not dealing with the bladder one and I've had no problems this has been really good um, it actually just overall I have maybe some bad memories of my early days with the Pilot Metropolitan where it dried out, but I didn't understand back then about a lot of, you know, how we needed to keep writing with them and things like that. 
but uh, and I was so new and who knows what ink I was trying to use but anyway it gets an A I think I like this nib better in uh, Pilot Kakuno and even the Prera so that's the only reason it didn't get an A plus I think and that's so subjective and so minute the difference but here we have it anyway and then next up is the Lamy Safari um, strawberry with a broad nib I think it's yeah it's a black Lamy broad nib with KWZ Thief's Red and this is just a joy it's so perky the red is so bright and cheerful I gave it an A plus it's beautiful and flowy I, I just love it um, and it's been great for Valentine's Day uh oh is that a distressed cocoa I hear I hope not um, okay, so next up was the Twisby Eco in black with Twisby Royal Purple, one of my favorite inks, and it's an A plus too. It's just an old favorite, and this is a nice wide broad nib on this uh, Twisby Eco. They're not all created exactly equal, the broad nibs, but this is a really nice one. So um, I gave it an A plus, and I, I loved it. I'm still I've got three letters right now but those were all recently came in I had a few days where I was caught up on pen pal letters which is crazy it makes me wonder if I lost some or something because you know it never happens but okay next up is the Banu Scepter um, Scepter 1 with a broad nib and Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby and I just absolutely am mad crazy over this combination. I love the ink. I love the pen. It's so much fun to look at. It's so cheerful. I gave it an A++. You know, um, like I said too, that's pretty... I, I love all of these. It's an A. It's a straight A's anyway, but uh, some of the A's didn't go quite as high <laughs> with the pluses. But yeah, this this is just wonderful, and I'm so glad that I have a that I had a broad, broad nib unit to put on that one. Okay, then next up were two that I added to the lineup completely that you didn't see in the um, initial you know February video, and that is the, the Twisby Eco in um, orange transparent, and this was sent by a pen friend. I've got the. <laughs> I've got the more details on the page and my mind is like a, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, yeah, pen friend DB. Like I'm picturing the letter, I'm picturing the person and everything and, and the initials were eluding me, but we'll get, we'll get to that. With KWZ Standard Monarch, and this is awesome. It's, I think this ink has found its home. Like, I think I'm going to really enjoy having this, this is my favorite orange and having um, this, now, I think I did a nib switch. Yeah, because this came in with a fine nib. But anyway, we'll get into those details when we get to the page. Um, but it's an A+. Plus. It, it's just, and it's so funny. I couldn't believe it. I ended up with two orange pens and nibs and all the rest pink and purple and red. So it was like, all of a sudden, here we are. We interrupt this <laughs> Valentine month for orange, which is another story, which is the next pen. Okay, so the next pen uh, I won on an Instagram drawing, which I haven't really been entering a lot of them. I enter entered only two, this drawing and then one for some Ferris wheel press ink that I thought looked really cool. But I have so much everything that I haven't entered only the contest that I just was mad crazy to win the item. So this is a Jen Howe 82, and it was over at... Um, uh, Random Thinks, Keith at Random Thinks had this little giveaway, and uh, I think I did a nib switch on this one too. I mean, it came in with a beautiful stock extra fine nib, and I ended up putting a Nemesine medium nib in it that's silver. It doesn't really match the trim, but it writes so good. Um, it, it's really, really nice. I think, let's see, I tried it out with the fine. So down here at the bottom, that's with the fine, but our... Um, Somewhere on the page, I believe I did this sample, or I did an extra page, maybe. We'll, we'll see. It'll be a surprise to me, too. <laughs> so, this is the Scribo Aranchio di Sicilia. I uh, probably just mangled that unforgivably, but it's a gorgeous orange. I just absolutely love it. So, that's that. Now, let's just dive right into the pages, where we can get into the specifics. So... <laughs> So here, here is the El Grande Modified. Um, 
this was a pen friend gift from pen friend ms and it is uh it was like uh well made by him and the i think that's a kit but i i get them confused because there were three pens and but this one is the one that has the medium nib from pen realm and it's gorgeous and with that black swan australian roses oh just wonderful and i found that like it, it's even and predictable like there's no fussiness about it losing its uh it doesn't fade out in color as you write so this was just wonderful yeah, we're still waiting. Um, we've only got about a little more than a, a week to wait for Toby's uh, neutering surgery. And it can't come a moment too soon because, you know, he's a little boy and he needs to be neutered so that he doesn't get in any more squabbles. He's not aggressive, but it'll happen to him because he's roams, you know, sometimes. And he's staying closer to home. But anyway, I, I was going to try to focus just on pens and inks today. But... <laughs> Okay, so the next one, the, the Jin Hao X750 with the, the pink one with Levenger Pinkley, gorgeous, just gorgeous. So I was watching a video at the time and I just made note, 16 unrecognized signs of autistic women. I thought it was very interesting. And it, this too um, carries through. It doesn't fade out. It, it doesn't, uh, I get nice even, even flow with this nib and feed on the Jin Hao x750 uh, it's it's one of my favorite pens i have much more expensive pens but it's one of my favorites and i think it always will be okay so now we come up to those two incompletes and i wish i had the twisby precision right here but it wrote along and then it quit and i thought wow that's strange for that ink with with a twisby kind of situation but i need to do more work on figuring out why and it, it did it did make me wonder the pen quit right here it's a piston filler yeah i didn't have time i was i was right out straight um and this was on the first and i revisited it more but i couldn't get anything to come out of the pen so i gave it a good cleaning and i'm looking forward to trying it again i'll pick a different ink um i'll pick something but, I, you know, I, I trust the Graf Von Fabric Castile Stone Gray, but I might even go ahead and try, like, uh, the Waterman, the Waterman uh, Serenity Blue, I think. is Yeah, I might try that because now it's been cleaned good, too. Um, who knows? You just never know. Now, with the Moon Man Mini, it failed to write. And so I did a couple of things. The first thing I did was run... <laughs> this is how busy I was. I ran the nib under the water and then I took paper towel to encourage ink flow and, you know, uh, on the little breather hole. And I, I did some stuff and it says see page 293. So let's just do that. I need to trust myself that that's what we we're supposed to do. Okay. Second dry after rinsing. Okay. And then it went just a little ways and it quit again. So I did it again third try after rinsing um and then i kind of started to wonder i clued in i said i'm wondering if the sheen settled in my bottle this pen nib ink feed combo has never before given me trouble yeah and now right now it's still inked up because that's how bad i am about not wanting to give up see it, it's got some intermittent you if you saw there where i scribbled it did write right there but then it, it doesn't want to, or, you know, it, it's kind of, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going to make a liar out of me now. Isn't that funny? It, it's kind of funny. But I don't stand for those kinds of things. I need to get to the bottom of it because this would be a pen I'd be trusting it. I, I always have trusted this. But I do wonder, I see a lot of sheen, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show you because, oh, that's hard a sheen kind of build up and i'm just wondering because back then when i got that ink i didn't really think about kind of agitating even for a heavy sheener but i now think i would always do that with the bottle before filling it but i don't i just don't know what to think about it it kind of makes sense though if there's clogging in the feed so i've got to clean this again i see a lot of green sheen there but i never had that before so Anyway, it's a mystery still, somewhat, 
but and I said I won't give up on it. Um, I, I may give up on the ink though if it's going to do that. In fact, the best thing for me to do really would be to go ahead and clean that pen really well, you know, and then try like a, one of my favorite pilot inks because if it does it with that, which are, they're not super sheeny, they're not, you know, never, let's see, like I could take the Sitsuji, the Azalea, I guess it is. I could try that. In fact, that's probably what I'll do because I'm just crazy about that pen. I'm not giving up on it. And the other wild card thought that I had was, could I have gotten a silicone grease on it? I'm so careful. You know, when I did it down here, and, and I don't use, I know I immediately throw away any bits of paper towel that I use for that kind of thing. So I don't think so. But who knows? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so now I got to figure out. Uh, well, yeah, I got to go back to here, and that way I can not skip anything. Okay, so that was not a total fail, but it's a big frustration because to have it keep stop writing, that that can't be. I have to figure that out. Okay, and that was early on, but you see I haven't given up on that one like I did the Twisby Precision. I, I put that one away for now, but um, okay. Next up is the Pilot Metropolitan with the Retro Pop. And let's see, I've got all these inks just, ink tiles just stacked up with Monteverde Purple Rain. And I have really been enjoying this. This is excellent. Um, let's see. Oh, and I was currently reading the book, Why We Sleep, and I've already done a book report on that now. Yeah, but it's just a nice, really, um, really thin stub. It's almost like a 06 or 08. I'm not really sure what, what that amounts to. It, it says CM on it, but, and it's slightly sharp. It kind of reminds me of the Lamy uh, stub nibs, and I just enjoy it. The only one that I, I kind of enjoy more, sort of, is the Nemesine 0.8. That, that's a number six nib, and that thing gets moved around on my pens because I love it so much, but I'm too cheap, cheap to buy more. I think they're kind of expensive. And um, so if, if, as far as comfort in, uh, in writing and, like, that... That Nemesine nib is, is somehow polished just a little bit more, but it still gives you a distinctive um, line width variation, if that makes sense. So, um, but I love these because these are more accessible. They're, they're not as expensive to me. And, and uh, well, I've had a couple of them given to me. So what am I talking about? I only bought, I may not have ever bought one. Oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. Because, you know, you can... I'm just going to make sure that I blot that up a little. You can get them um, on a Pilot Metropolitan, and I think I think someone said they're they're available on the Prera too. I don't know. That wouldn't be a cheap <laughs> way to get one, but okay. Now I'm just babbling. But I love this. It's been great. Okay. Um, let's see. Next up is the Lamy Safari with um, and Strawberry with KWZ Thief's Red. And it's just amazing, just nice. And you, you get sort of a light reddish pink when you lift it with a water brush. So I'm, I was gonna see how much I have left in that. I, I don't know. Okay, well, it's down, I had it completely full. So really, I'll have some, uh, well, the rest of the month. I've got the rest of the month too. And I'm gonna be kind of maybe going into some greens for March, so. We'll see if I can fi finish that fill with journaling and everything else. And, and I do have three letters to write. So, okay, next up is the Twisby Eco, the black one with the Twisby Royal Purple. And I, I love this. Oh, I must have been on a video watching uh, thing. I think I was trying to shift my mind from some area of rumination onto <laughs> different subjects, <coughs> actually. And this is Kate Caden. I love her. She's a, a young woman who has a financial channel. And she's just really sharp, really good. And she talks about five kitchen saving tips. And I thought those were cool, so I wrote them all down. You know, she's, she's probably working a lot more than I do. But I like the idea of batch cooking on the weekend, too, because 
during the week we're we're doing more active things and and it would be nice for me not to have to then slow down to cook a larger meal i could have it already done i mean what works for a working mom also works for people that want to be busy with cats and and running around and doing different home projects like painting and and trying to finish their kitchen so <laughs> she had some really good ideas and then um then the one that i the only a plus plus for the month was the Banu scepter one uh, with that beautiful Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. I am so glad that I bought that ink while I was spending money. I I can't tell you <laughs> how glad I am that I, I don't even remember why I had the money at the time, but I did buy the whole bottle. And I didn't need it, but I'm really glad I got it because, you know, there are some other colors similar, but I just am crazy about the ink. Generally, their inks seem dry to me, but this one just, just seems wonderful. So, okay, so then here is the, uh, the Twisby Eco in orange transparent. And let's see, I put the KWZ Monarch in it, my favorite orange. It's kind of a burned orange, sort of. And, um, yeah, it's just fantastic. And I kind of could have predicted that, but I did uh, get out of my comfort zone and switch nib from, I think, from a Twisby swipe onto it because it came with a fine nib, and I just love to see... Uh, KWZ Monarch with a broad nib and sure enough it's just gorgeous I mean it doesn't actually fit with Valentine's but now we're past Valentine's maybe it can go for the kill winter with orange <laughs> kind of theme and I am really eager for Vermont winter to be over so that you know if there was any chance of me being able to travel that that could maybe happen easier so then the little um the little giveaway pen the little Jen Hao 82, which I'm just charmed by. I can't believe how many colors they have now. They, I don't want to even look because um, it would tempt me in a, at a time when I seriously can't spend. But just, oh, I was so excited. Um, oops. Um, okay, so the phone was ringing. But what I wanted to say about this is that the medium Nemesine nib that I put on it, I had gotten five of them for $25 way back. And they were on sale. And they're number five standard nibs. And I've been really happy with these nibs. Um, this, uh, of course, is a thinner line. Let's see. I did believe... Yeah, okay. On the next page, it will be the one that I did with the medium nib. Actually, let's just move over there. Makes more sense. So after I switched... So this was the fine with that um, Scribo ink, which is gorgeous. I'd forgotten about the sample. It had been... Uh, put into a big order of mine by Van S way back in the, in, I don't know when, <laughs> a long time ago, but it's a gorgeous ink. And um, I knew it would look better with a medium nib. So I switched, uh, I actually just used regular tape. I was in such a hurry. Um, you know, I'd, I've been so busy with stuff and, uh, you know, phone calls and conferences and paperwork and et cetera. So, and cats, I just pull it out and thank goodness everything didn't come out, just the nib. And it was so easy to switch the nib that way. So, um, yeah, and, and the medium nib, just really nice. So it was a, a giveaway by uh, Keith at Random Things on Instagram. And, and it's the Kill Winter with Orange project. I had, oops, okay, Coco, I'm going to be moving to the other room in just a minute. You can go with me. Anyway, I better stop uh, going overboard with my talking because he, he's gone away from daddy now and he's over here with mommy. Okay. So, okay, we already talked about the second try there. And this was the very end of the journal. And I also did already the flip through of this entire Bond Travel Gear journal. It's now going to go up on the shelf, but I'll be getting back into it quite a bit, I'm sure. And I think we're going to go to the library just to do a little face-to-face -face chat. <laughs> There's Coco's paw. Hello, Coco. You going to go with me? I don't know where I can put you there because I can't put you on the bookshelf. Oops. Okay, here we go. There. So here we are in the library uh, just so I could do a little bit of face-to-face -face chatting. But just as I pressed pause, 
um, my husband Manuel told me, you made a mistake. He said, you said in the earlier part of the video, we're halfway through March. So at least I get a chance to correct that here. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised, you know, at, at anything <laughs> right now. So um, sorry about that. We're definitely halfway through February, but I think my mind is on March. It actually is because I've enjoyed the, the reds and the pinks. And I started thinking about all the different variations of green and how many samples I'll probably find in my, uh, on all those Birmingham samples and all of the older ones. So um, bottled ink wise, I'm not big on, on green, but I have quite a bit. And so that'll be a fun thing, but we're not anywhere near March yet. So <laughs> anyway, and uh, in fact, uh, I've got a few pens in my rickshaw, uh, now I'm going to go blank on it. You know, it's it's the Sinclair R. There we go. There we go. That's what they called it. And uh, so I have a few that I'm using up the fills. And I tend to keep all of them in this. And then all of the ones for the current month are in that Galen tray. You know, the Galen leather tray there. Um, which I may do a review on because I find it so awesome. I don't know if, it, if that's interesting to anybody. I'm not sure how much I could say about it. Just that it's awesome, but I'll think about that. And let me know if, if that's of interest to you. So, like, I I actually put a cartridge in a Pilot Kakuno, and I don't know what, what my idea was. Oh, this was my first Pilot Kakuno fine that was languishing away over in my student pen project. And I thought, oh, I haven't tried that. So I put the fine, you know, it has a fine nib and I put a cartridge in it. And then I'm finishing the fill on that Keras Custom pen. I love that. I just, oh my gosh. And I can't wait to try other inks because I was mistaken in the beginning. I thought that the extra fine nib, I wouldn't be all that jazzed about, but it's more almost like a medium nib. It writes really well, and I'll bet you a lot of my favorite inks will go in this pen. And then, like, I'm just finishing the pilot, the Platinum um, 3776. It's doing pretty well with the, um, it's got a purple ink, and I can't remember which Oh, okay. It must be the Mont Blanc ink. And I didn't, I just really wanted to use every drop of that up. And then um, I still have a little bit of ink. And you can't even tell. It looks like it's full, but it's not in the Twisby Eco uh, Indigo. So, you know, I'm just, these are, are over in the library where, <laughs> where I actually did another thing. Um, I actually ended up I needed something to take my mind totally off um, worries of any kind about cats and about, uh, you know, mom situation and the whole nine yards. I ended up stuck in a series uh, on Netflix called uh, This Is Us. And I had never seen a single episode of it. I didn't know about it. I watched the first episode. Or I watched it thinking it was a movie. I didn't, and you know, that happens sometimes to me. I'll say, oh, that looks good. So I watched the whole first thing. And then I thought, oh, that was the best movie I've watched in a long time. And then another episode started and I was like, what is this? And so anyway, I was satisfied with the first, you know, whatever it was, hour and a half, or it must have been the premiere. And I ended up watching all six, <laughs> um, all six seasons of that. And I, I found it emotional. I cried a lot. It was good, though. It was so good and kind of healing in a way. So anyway, I did that. And but I was over here and I was working at the same time. It, whenever I do something like that, I make myself stop and then go and clean things, do things, you know, write things, write a letter, come back, because I can get really down a rabbit hole on YouTube or on Netflix, and it's, it can be not good, but, but I just considered this base camp, and, and, uh, oh, we did all kinds of remodeling in here, but I can't show it yet, because I hate the way the floor looks, but anyway, the floor is a summer project, I think, uh, but we ended up with a corner desk in here, so I, I had, just lots of real estate for myself to just kind of, you know, uh, recharge myself after challenging things that I did with paperwork. I find paperwork and applications to be one of the hardest things because 
I like to start a job and finish it. I, I don't like things that hang out and are pending and are like uncertain and can I find this? Where am I going to find it? Who's going to help me? That kind of thing. So um, anyway, that is why I needed Netflix. I needed my pens. I needed books and everything else. But oh my goodness, I knew I should do an index card before I started <laughs> doing this part of the video, but it isn't the way I'm rolling right now. I'm just doing stuff and, and less preparation, I guess, because I, I'm actually I'm doing a whole bunch of laundry right now, trying to get all of the living room furniture covers back on and squared away. And, and I got one cat a little bit unhappy with me because he's outside and, and I really don't want him coming back in until I get all that, the covering and different things back on, but it's warm out. It's like 62 and He's out there kind of hanging around the utility room and I put toys out there and he's got a bed and everything. But um, so, yeah, I guess showing this was just to explain that I do have a few more pens that I'm writing dry. I don't like to waste anything. And so I'm writing those dry. And then I've got a decision to make too. Let's see, I put this, <laughs> I put this journal a long ways away from me. I am just about to finish this Odyssey notebook. And so I've kind of narrowed it down to two notebooks, but I'm kind of uh, not sure what they, what one of them is. Oh my goodness. And I'll have to go back in and see if I can figure it out. Um, but what I realized was, this is just for daily journaling, you know, thoughts and long form journaling. And it is a wonderful journal. It's a Tomoy River 68 GSM. Um, and it was a pen friend gift from MS. And I've just got, I think six pages left and I've just been enjoying it so much. It, it, it whole, it, it doesn't give me any trouble with any ink. It's just gorgeous. Uh, anything I want to pick up and there's no bleed through. And, and as there was one, <laughs> there was one day where I didn't like what I wrote. It was bad. So I went and I like completely obliterated it with a water brush because it was ugly. It just because I was, you know, upset in the moment and I, I don't want that to be there. So anyway, that's the beauty of Tomoy River paper or uh, CVS caliber. You can just, if it's not a permanent ink, that is. So I've got two that I found that are lined, found. Um, these have been sent in by generous pen friends and one was sent by a pen friend RL and the other from pen friend MS. And this one here, I just can't remember what it is. It's lined, it's gorgeous, but I don't remember whether this is a Tomoy River paper or Cosmo paper. It, it's a nice, uh, nice lined, I don't think it's labeled. And it's, <coughs> it's gorgeous. I can see this uh, going right into, I could decorate it with stickers or decorate it with lots of things. And I could see it going into one of my uh, just journal covers, not a leather one, maybe the zip one, maybe the knock one, which I haven't used in a long time. And it's got so many pages. Um, and I'm intrigued by it. And I need to find her letter to remember what it was. It's a really nice feeling paper. It's got to be either Tomoy River paper or uh, like a, the Cosmo paper. It's gorgeous. And then this one intrigues me. It's smaller. It's not as many pages. It's a gray book ruled. It looks like maybe Franklin Kristoff because it's got that logo. And it's um, it says lined. Yeah, ruled. Very interesting. And I can see by the edges that the rule will be wide enough. See, I, I can write in a dot grid journal for my regular everyday journaling, but it's never quite as much fun for me. I, I like a lined, I'm very lazy, and I, I think that a lined uh, page just it just goes with, I'm gonna open this, let's see if I can. Oh, where is my little uh, seam ripper when I need it? Shoot, oh, there we go, okay. I managed to stress it enough. I just kinda wanted to open this, cause the other one's already open. Um, this one I would probably fill up sooner, but it's not like I really get bored with notebooks. I actually bond with my notebooks and I hate for them to be full in the long run because <coughs> change seems to be a problem for me too. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. Huh. You know what? I think what I'll do is I'll do a pen test in the back of this 
And depending on how that comes out, yeah, it is a Franklin Kristoff. Oh, how neat. Um, if, if the pen test comes out where I think I'm going to enjoy the, because this feels like a little bit toothier paper, but it's got a nice lined, you know, it, it's lined real pretty. Um, it's going to come down to the pen test page. I'll do one for both books and then I'll just decide because this is smaller. This could actually be a notes pay book for a notebook for, uh, you know, nonfiction books. I like to take a lot of notes. It could be something like that, or it could be one or two subjects. So I'll do that. And I'll let you know on the next, next time that I do a video, what I decided. Um, the other thing is my reading, which I read that book, um, why we sleep and it was just awesome and but i'm wanting to make sure i have enough fiction lined up you know that i'm reading fiction because that takes me away more from problems <laughs> or perceived problems i guess because you know i don't really actually have a real problem i just have challenges inconveniences things like that okay you know i got to admit it um so i've i've gotten myself almost halfway through far from the matting crowd by thomas hardy and right about when mom took the fall and things got really stressful <coughs> i kind of realized that i was just kind of glazing over i wasn't actually reading this as well and before that happened i was even bending over pages wanting to go back there was some beautiful you know descriptions and some really interesting statements i even like underline things oh here's one i underline it said misfortune is a fine opiate to personal terror really interesting you know like deep stuff but i think maybe that's why this is not a lazy read in in my world anyway it might be for somebody else <laughs> i shouldn't say you know it's not like a general statement like that is ridiculous but i so I don't know whether to go back into this one or since I seem to really love John, John Steinbeck's writing style, I'm thinking about, I've never read Grapes of Wrath. So I have this, I know what it's about. You know, I, I get the general idea that it's about, uh, you know, the Dust Bowl. And I, I've read only one other book about it, which was, uh, I think it was called The Four Winds by Chris, Kristen Hanna. And I, I just don't think, I think this will be really, you know, high caliber and, and uh, it's so, so well known and, and popular and everything. So I'm thinking about that. And then I'm reading, um, but this is separate. I'm reading the little book of stoicism and I'm, <laughs> I'm pining away over a book on Amazon, which, you know, I just have to decide, am I going to, am I going to buy a book when I'm not buying anything? The book that I'm pining over is, um, uh, it's called stoicism for dummies and it showed up and it's like oh my goodness you know i almost bought it as my last purchase before i did away with amazon prime you know because we we were up for renewal and we both decided let's take a break from that uh, we didn't we don't need the videos we got it on netflix and uh you know check away at this big bill that we have and and savings replenishing savings and stuff so anyway what I'm thinking is I can request the library to get that one or I could try to get it on interlibrary loan and take gobs of notes and then someday it'll be second hand for five bucks. You know, that's the way books go. But uh, in the meantime, I have plenty of uh, books on Stoicism. I've got the handbook for new Stoics, How to Be a Stoic. I've read this two or three times. I love this book. And then I've got Ryan Holiday's um, The Daily Stoic. That It's right by my chair, so I just pull it out and read the daily reading but this one even though it's simple the chapters are short and it's a good reminder i think so for nonfiction, this is what i'm in right at the moment you know just barely but i read a couple chapters like halfway through it always has one of the ancient uh philosophers quotes hopefully you're not hearing that dog and the, the neighbor dog is going nuts um and then, you know, it's a short chapter that sort of makes it a little more digestible. And I like it. I like the book. It's quite good. It's by Jonas Salzberger. Hmm, probably mangled that name too. But anyway, it's, it's real good. So I put it on top because when I'm sitting here in my chair, I can just kind of get up and, and get that real quickly. Um, and then, you know, 
I always like to have a paper bag as a backup, like something easy to grab and take with me to doctor's offices and stuff. And I did the dumb thing of, I kind of did some um, putting things away and bagging up some of my paper bags because I was trying to make sure nothing on the floor, nothing um, in the way when I had Toby back in here. But right now, Toby's restricted to the other side, uh, just to the living room. And then, you know, my office, dining room area and kitchen. And uh, because he's he's been kind of stressed about territory and, and he's done some marking and oh my goodness, it's just it's just too much work to be cleaning up. But um, so that's where I'm at. Just, you know, things have kind of died down with the uh, with uh, with everything for mom. And I'm just going to say that we're in the discharge planning uh, process for for possibly even this week so it's looking that way for her to go home to her assisted living so thank you for all the well wishes and prayers and positive thoughts that's been amazing <coughs> and um and i had a huge win this week with the with the huge application thing that i was doing and it made me remember it made me remember all what mom went through with me to do all that huge financial aid package for me to try to get um, grants and and loans and stuff for college so I had not to be any complaining on this end you know when you know there are things that need to be done for our parents at, at, at this time you know imagine how busy she was at that time I do and I remember just begging her to go to the bank with me because you know I needed a loan I needed to end up with a loan and and it wasn't that I had to beg it was more like you know, that was the time when I didn't have a license. I didn't have a car and I was trying to borrow money. So, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, probably do things different if I had that to do over again, but okay. I think that's my signal for this video is pretty much over, but I'm enjoying all my pens and inks The you know, finishing up the ones that are sort of stragglers or that I couldn't, I couldn't bear to rinse out the final ink and also the ones for, for this, for February. And then already, I admit it, looking ahead to March, wondering what greens I'm going to pick or what like, um, and complimentary like blacks and, and different colors. Um, yeah, because I still have quite a few black inks to try out. Um, and some like, I've got the carbon black and, and several, and one, the one that I, the Bunga Box Silent Nights that I have in this uh, Keras Custom, oh my gosh, that ink. I just, it, I had underappreciated that ink until I got it in this nib, so pretty cool. So I'd love to hear in the comments what you're writing with and, and or any misadventures or, or A++ or whatever, any really good matchups that you've found. Or have you won anything on Instagram? I was so excited. I was like, <laughs> I was really excited and surprised. So anyway, I will see you on the next video. I'm not exactly sure what what that will be um, because things tend to just kind of get extremely busy and then they they get calm again and I'm able to I, I try to keep really regular with this um, at the right at the middle of the month I try to do the progress report because it's important to me too and it's important that I have at least some consistency somewhere so um yeah, and we'll, we'll, the next big project that's not pen related is getting getting Toby neutered and crossing our fingers that things will improve with the marking. And I think they will, um, but it's not a guarantee that that's all going to change overnight. That's probably not going to change overnight. But I think that we can get him closer to home, get him to stop roaming, and phase by phase we'll get him integrated into the house and... Uh, I'm just really hoping because I have noticed that he's not much of a jumper. He stands there to calculate quite a while and kind of hesitates on jumping up onto the climber. And even when I'm right there and nobody's there and I've said, you know, there's nobody up there. He's, uh, actually I would love to, to get him x-rayed, but I'm afraid of what I might find. Um, he's not limping at all. But I just know that he's had a hard life up to this point. So everything we can do to get him um, to stay closer to home, stay away from the other tomcats, and get um, 
and get him more and more comfortable in here because nobody's really nobody's beaten up on him but he is definitely so um not dominant the opposite you know he's he's just he's just so passive i guess you know and coco is just all excited wanting to play wanting to do things and and it's it's too much so we're, we're having to have some special time just with toby and and you know divide and conquer and all that but anyway i wasn't going to talk about cats darn it i was just going to try to stick to pens inks and books but I'll see you on the next one, and I hope that your winter is going well for you and your February. We are in February still. <laughs> Bye for now.